Floyd and I made it, uh, we made it in order to be able to paint, um, stand up on it. There, there were two of them. We had two of them. We put planks there so that you could get in paint and work on, uh, paint the underside of the, uh, what now is an attic. These boards came from the pine trees uh, uh, back uh, or north of it that we're looking out the window at. Uh, where the light is coming from. That's where they came from. Uh, I helped Floyd Woodbeck chop them down, saw them up, and we brought them to Walter Hewins, who uh, saw the boards of the board and batten. So this is leftover board from the board and batten of the barn. That's where those boards came from. Uh, they came from our trees, they came from the land. We took them down. We took them down to Walters, down the big steep hill down there, and I, I drove a tractor up the hill, and I, I, I thought I was going to, that was going to be the end of me. <laughs> it stalled halfway up the hill and began to go backwards, and it was an old tractor, and I, I wasn't any place I could jump out. I would have jumped. I tasted the copper in the mouth. The people, that they, they say, I guess you get a shot of adrenaline or something. You taste copper. I've done it twice, twice in my life. That was once. So I've had an experience with these boards, you see, with the trees. In the Dickinson class, we always look at unexpected angles, like looking down at things, at something that's in Dickinson's painting. And things. When you're unexpected, you don't bring a whole lot of ideas, you see. You bring your eyes. So that's, I had that training. And gradually I became more and more interested in what it was I was painting. And so I brought it up to an eye level so that I could see what it was, not from a wild, strange point of view, but from a more normal point of view so that I could study it because I was interested in it. And that is the difference between Dickinson and me, if I may say, is that Dickinson had this sense of fantasy and uh, enjoyment of the uh, unthought experience, but the thought came in in terms of fantasy for him, whereas I'm just rooted like an old materialist, like an old New England materialist, I'm rooted in the thing. I love the thing. I love the differences in things, the differences in people, the differences in apples. And it's every time I experience it, in paint, it's new, it's fresh, every single time. There's not one boring moment. This isn't just an ordinary still life table in the middle of somebody's room. This is a bloody work of art, and it's all nature. Well, those trees are just like, uh, I don't know, they, not only like human beings. I mean, look at the difference in shape between the black maple and the, and the pig nut tree here and these apple trees. I mean, it's a wondrous thing, you know, how they grow. And I guess there's a fractal order behind their growth so that the, the small elements is repeated and repeated but I can see it's harmonics at work. I can see the larger patterns within the smaller patterns and the smaller patterns, patterns echoing the larger patterns. And it gives me a perfect delight. And the variety, I mean, you've got evergreens over there, you've got pine and cedar, as you know, these cedar trees, we used to have a lot more of them. Jeez, what a variety.
and you got things close to you and you've got things far away and you have the light which is changing and right now it seems as though it maybe is starting to snow a little hooray hooray it's a very great help when you're a painter you do a lot of squinting you do a lot of squinting so that you can see the big shapes and you get the big color notes and you don't see the little stuff you you put your eyes out of focus and you can feel the muscles pull and that doesn't get your eyelashes down so they can really see the color. So I'm looking out over into probably uh, ash and heaven knows what's back in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a very delicate purpley note in the darks. Almost at the same value, uh, degree of, of, of dark, do you see, is what's going on over here with a, with a, with a, with a, with a area of the pine which has been affected by the, the uh, some of the apple shoots and uh, suckers and things that are in front of it. And, 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 and what's the, the, uh, the big nut branches, do you see, affect, affect the color of the whole thing in there. So that you get this, this wonderful play between the warmer note over here and the slightly more purpley note. They're so delicate, you hate to use words because all of the color is unnameable. The color of life is unnameable. We like to simplify it all down so that we can talk in code all day, red, yellow, and blue, you know. Grass is green. If you ever looked at grass, you'd, you'd, you'd shut your mouth. If you shut your mouth and used your eyes, you might have a chance of seeing something. But your mouth is open and your eyes are closed, and then you run for politics. <laughs> oh God, how did you get that one in? Slipped out. <laughs> that was good. <laughs>